Hi guys, so today in our series of lectures on hepatobiliary system, after discussing numerous conditions related to liver, be it acute hepatitis, acute liver failure, metabolic liver diseases, alcoholic liver disease, and autoimmune hepatitis, now it's time to talk about chronic hepatitis. Chronic hepatitis progressing into cirrhosis, and then development of portal hypertension, and over a period of time, there can be decompensated cirrhosis or acute on chronic liver failure. Okay, so let's understand a few things first. Suppose if a person is suffering from chronic hepatitis, take example of chronic hepatitis B. Chronic hepatitis B is disease lasting for at least more than six months or more than twenty six weeks. If it is a long duration, you will have to classify it under acute hepatitis or subacute hepatitis. Okay, so chronicity is basically any liver disease of more than six months. Over a period of time, chronic hepatitis B can progress into cirrhosis. Okay, that is fibrosis of the liver. Then cirrhosis over a period of time can develop portal hypertension and then decompensated cirrhosis. Decompensated cirrhosis. Decompensated cirrhosis. कब कहेंगे हम लोग decompensated cirrhosis हैं? If patient of chronic liver disease develops ascites, develops variceal bleed, develops hepatic encephalopathy. Very very important. Okay. And during this course of disease, patient can develop Liver failure any time, right? That is known as acute on chronic liver failure, right? And there will be appearance of jaundice along with ascites. So this is very simple concept, right? We have just studied the progression of chronic liver disease. Patient can recover also, okay? But recovery is in initial stages only, okay? So these are series of events. For chronic liver disease, let's first understand what are the various causes of chronic liver disease. First of all, we have alcoholic liver disease, evergreen substance, and most common cause of chronic liver disease. Okay, then in the case chronic viral hepatitis, we have already studied viral hepatitis, and among the hepatotropic viruses, hepatitis E and hepatitis E can cause only acute hepatitis. Not chronic, be it acute hepatitis or acute liver failure. Hepatitis A alphabetically comes first. We have studied this, and this is most common in children. Hepatitis E alphabetically last among hepatotropic viruses, and this is most common form of acute hepatitis or cause of acute liver failure in adults. For acute liver diseases only. Whereas hepatitis C virus, D virus, and even B virus can cause acute as well as chronic hepatitis. Hepatitis C virus. Here you have C. Okay, so this have maximum chances of developing chronic hepatitis, but overall incidence of hepatitis B is far more as compared to hepatitis C. So in general, viral hepatitis due to hepatitis B. Is seen in more number, right? Then you have alcoholic and non-alcoholic state of hepatitis. We have already discussed non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Then you have cholestatic conditions like primary biliary cirrhosis and primary sclerosing cholangitis, metabolic diseases in form of hemochromatosis. In hemochromatosis, there will be increased iron overload, whereas in Wilson's disease, there will be increased copper overload. We have studied. Then, so genetic conditions, be it alpha one antitrypsin deficiency and cystic fibrosis, these are so common conditions which can lead to a chronic hepatitis, progressing into chronic liver disease, or decompensated cirrhosis, or acute on chronic liver failure. Okay. Now, let's once again understand the progression of the disease. Take example of alcoholic liver disease. Right. Let's start from chronic hepatitis. Okay. Chronic. Hepatitis, chronic hepatitis progressing into cirrhosis, and then cirrhosis over a period of time will cause pressure in portal veins to increase. That is portal hypertension, and then portal hypertension 
over a period of time can lead to complications, be it ascites, be it variceal bleed, right? This is known as decompensated, decompensated liver cirrhosis, okay? Very, very simple. And during this course of disease, patient can develop liver failure that is known as acute or chronic liver failure manifested by jaundice, ascites, etc. Okay? So these are the series of events. You have chronic liver disease, progressing into liver cirrhosis, progressing into portal hypertension, progressing into decompensated decompensated cirrhosis okay due to ascites so ascites is first sign of decompensated cirrhosis it can be also associated with hepatic encephalopathy it can also be associated with variceal bleed in form of hematemesis and per rectal bleed okay during this course of illness patient can develop acute on chronic liver failure very very simple we have understood the basics there are various clinical manifestations of chronic liver disease few can be directly related to liver right few can be indirectly related to liver for example jaundice can be directly related to a liver disease okay for example edema ascites can also be directly related to liver disease due to decreased albumin in a similar way, you have leukonychia, that is whiteness due to decreased albumin, also known as terinase, okay? But few clinical manifestations cannot be directly related to liver. For example, take gynecomastia in males and breast atrophy in females. Unfortunately, it can lead to gynecomastia in males, that is breast enlargement in males, whereas breast atrophy in females, along with testicular atrophy in males, along with loss of libido in males, okay? So, other clinical features are there, mainly due to vasodilation, and these are caput medici, spirit nevi, palmar edema, okay? Or the kuch clinical manifestations hain, hum log discuss kar hain, right? You have palmar edema, you have caput medici, you have spirit nevi, okay? So, there are multiple clinical features related to chronic liver disease. We will try to understand each one of them one by one. Let's again see few clinical manifestations. You have ascites, hepatomegaly. In case of chronic liver diseases, initially there might be hepatomegaly due to inflammation of liver. But over a period of time, liver cells will be replaced by fibrous tissue and with fibrosis, liver can shrink in size okay so hepatomegaly might be absent in later cases caput medusi prominent veins around umbilicus gynecomastia ictrus palmar edema spider nevi here you have leukonychia leukonychia means white nails also known as terry nails okay this is due to decreased albumin you have fetal hepaticus due to increased level of mercaptans, okay? Increased mercaptans bypass liver and reach lungs, okay? From lungs they are excreted out, giving rise to peculiar smell that is known as ceter hepaticus, okay? A concept dekhte hain. Ham logo ne kaha, males ne, there are three main complications in form of gynecomastia, in form of testicular atrophy, atrophy of testis, and loss of libido. These manifestations can be explained with the fact that in males or in chronic liver disease, there is increased level of estrogen, right? If estrogen level increases in males, it can lead to these type of complications. Let's understand why the estrogen level increases, okay? This is androstenedione and this is converted into estrogen compound, okay? This androstenedione is secreted by adrenal gland, normally secreted by adrenal gland and it is weak androgen, okay? 
when liver liver is normal liver picks up this androstenedione and destroys it right or metabolizes it so level of androstenedione is kept in check example take this is your functional liver and then you have kidney here you have adrenal gland okay adrenal gland secretes androstenedione andro is stenedion and this is taken up by liver and destroyed okay remember in this way but if your liver is not functional liver cannot do uptake of this substance and metabolize so in case of chronic liver disease level of androstenedione increases which is further converted into estrogen in peripheral tissues particularly adipose tissues due to help of with help of aromatase enzyme let's see suppose someone is having suffering from chronic liver disease and in this patient there is secretion of what androstenedione andro is stenedione this androstenedione might not be taken up by liver so it is not getting destroyed in patients of chronic liver disease so level of andro is stenedione can increase and this androstenedione escapes in peripheral circulation and gets converted into estrogen okay with help of enzyme aromatase right mainly in adipose tissues so this is aromatization of androstenedione and resulting in increased estrogen right this in bring lot of complications particularly in male patients plus this is the strong vasodilator so various other clinical manifestations in case of chronic liver disease can be associated with vasodilator effects of various compounds one of them is estrogen right so you can also cause caput medusi this can also cause spider nevi and palmer erythema okay so various manifestations can be related to vasodilator substances and you can memorize it it might not be always estrogen leading to these conditions right caput medusi is spider nevi and palmer erythema now it has become very easy to memorize all the clinical features of chronic liver disease this is caput medusi this is spider nevi this is gynecomastia right interesting case log aise logo ke kaafi maje lete hain gynecomastia in males breast atrophy in females okay ek baar isko recap karte hain aur kuch funda lagate hain jisse tum logo ko zyada time tak yaad rahe okay let's talk about clinical features of chronic liver disease to pehli cheez hum log isko divide kar lete hain clinical features due to increased estrogen okay estrogen kyun increase karega hum logo ne already dekh liya hai अगर मैं मेल्स की बात करूं इन पर्टिकुलर देर इज वॉट देर इज गायनिकोमेस्टिया गायनिको मेस्टिया दैट इज ब्रेस्ट एनलार्जमेंट इन मेल्स देन यू हैव टेस्टिकुलर एट्रॉफी टेस्टिकुलर एट्रॉफी थर्ड इज लॉस ऑफ लिबिडो ओके वेरी वेरी सिंपल but in case of females this is not the case in females there is breast atrophy okay reverse ho raha hai yahan pe iske alawa bhi hum logo ne discuss kiya hai this estrogen has also which effect vaso dilatory effect vaso dilator okay to yahan pe kuch aur clinical features very directly related now who you can remember in form of caput medusi caput medusi and then you have spider nevi and finally you have one more thing palmer erythema palmer erythema kuch clinical features aur hain unko hum log kaise yaad kar sakte hain you have due to decreased albumin right you can explain edema even ascites right even anasarca due to decreased level of albumin leading to decrease oncotic pressure and b is terinil that is white nails that is leukonychia so we are done with clinical features of chronic liver disease 
इसमें जान बोझ के आई डिड नॉट इंक्लूड पोर्टल हाइपर क्योंकि नेक्स्ट टॉपिक हम लोग पोर्टल हाइपर पढ़ेंगे उससे रिलेटेड क्लिनिकल फीचर्स भी क्रॉनिक लिवर डिसीज के पार्ट होंगे लेट सी वॉट इज पोर्टल हाइपर टेंसन वॉट इज पोर्टल वेन राइट पोर्टल वेन कुछ इस तरीके से होगी राइट दिस विल ब्रिंग ऑल द ब्लड फ्रॉम इंटेस्टाइनल रीजन सो दैट लिवर कैन पिक अप वेरियस मेटाबोलाइट्स एंड सब्सटेंसेज सो दिस इज योर पोर्टल वेन दिस इज स्प्लिनिक वेन एंड दिस इज सुपीरियर मेनेट्रिक वेन दिस टेक्स ब्लड टू लिवर साइनासॉइड्स एंड देन इट इज गिवेन टू इन्फीरियर वेना कीवा एंड फाइनली हार्ड ओके तो अगर मैं कहूँ पोर्टल वेन के अंदर प्रेशर इंक्रीज हो जाए दिस इज नोन एज पोर्टल हाइपर टेंस वेरी सिंपल थिंग अब अगर मैं कहूँ पोर्टल वेन का प्रेशर पोर्टल वेन प्रेशर नॉर्मली कितना नॉर्मल कितना होगा लेस देन टेन एम एम एच टी बट पोर्टल वेन प्रेशर इज मेजर्ड इन डायरेक्टली विथ हेल्प ऑफ हिपैटिक वीनस प्रेसर ग्रीनियन एच वी पी जी एंड दिस इज नॉर्मली लेस देन फाइव एम एम एच जी ओके एंड दिस रिफ्लेक्ट्स पोर्टल वेन प्रेसर इन डायरेक्टली ओके सो इफ हिपैटिक वीनस प्रेसर ग्रेडियंट इंक्रीज मोर देन फाइव एम एम इट मीन्स देर इज पोर्टल हाइपर टेंसन ओके और पोर्टल वेन प्रेसर इट सेल्फ इंक्रीज मोर देन टेन एम एम ओके दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ हिपैटिक वीनस प्रेसर ग्रेडियंट ऑफ वन टू फाइव मिलीमीटर इज नॉर्मल ओके इफ इट इंक्रीज मोर देन फाइव इट इज पोर्टल हाइपर टेंसन इफ इट इंक्रीज मोर देन टेन देन इट इज क्लिनिकली सिग्निफिकेंट पोर्टल हाइपर टेंसन 